Good morning, Unity Church of Raleigh, and happy Mother's Day. It is such a privilege to be able to speak today of all days, this wonderful day when we celebrate love. And so in that spirit, as we get ready to move into the talk, I would invite you to take a moment to get centered together. So where you are right now, in this moment, just take a nice deep breath. Close your eyes and very gently allow your attention to move from your head to your heart center. And as you focus on your heart center, be aware of that feeling of warmth that emanates from that heart center when you focus on the word love. Be aware of a feeling of being nurtured and cared for appreciated and valued. And realize that as you breathe, that heart center sends out love in an energy that continues to grow. And as we let our love light shine, together we are going to send a wonderful Mother's Day gift to Mother Earth. a gift of healing, a gift of life, a gift of nurturing and safety and joy. So be aware of your light shining, growing, surrounding this beautiful planet and sending the energy of love to every person every animal, every plant, everything in nature, all of Mother Earth that so greatly needs our love and our healing in this moment. And we know because there is no geography and spirit that our love can join with the love of every person who hears this message right here, right now. And together, we send that love. We send that healing. We send divine wisdom to our leaders and hope to people everywhere. And as we begin to bring that energy back in toward us, feeling that love just enwrapping and enveloping us, we can sense that Mother Earth is saying, thank you. Smiling and breathing with the joy of the love that we have shared. And so now in this moment, bring yourself back to this time, this place, this awareness. Breathe. Open your eyes and smile, knowing that we truly have made a difference with our energy of love. Love is such a powerful word and it really goes hand in hand with Mother's Day. Although not everybody has loving feelings when they hear the word mother because it conjures up all kinds of experiences that people have had. Now for me, I was very blessed. I have a mother who taught me unconditional love. She practiced unconditional love. She teaches, even now she's 93 years old and still has such wisdom to share with me. So I was truly blessed. And I realize how fortunate I am that not everybody had that experience. And so whatever image comes up in your mind, I'd like to bring everybody's images together in this moment because being part of unity, we all share one mother. Did you know that? We share the mother of unity who is Myrtle Fillmore. And I thought it would be kind of cool here on Mother's Day to share some stories about Myrtle Fillmore and the legacy that she left us in terms of her teachings about things. 
Now I wanna be really honest here. I had trouble with this because there are so many incredible stories about Myrtle Fillmore and so many wonderful teachings. I had trouble narrowing it down, but I promise I did. I won't share everything I know. I could do a week on class, 24 seven class, just on teachings from Myrtle Fillmore, but I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna share a few of my favorites, a few that I think have a lot of meaning for us in the time we're living right now as we walk our spiritual path. As I share some of these teachings, I'd like to invite you to look inside yourself, explore what you're doing and ask yourself, hmm, what legacy am I leaving? Am I truly walking my talk in spirituality? Am I living my practice so others can see and learn from what I'm doing? So let's take a look at Myrtle Fillmore. Now in our movement, Charles Fillmore is always seen as the deep thinker. He's the one who's the metaphysician and the head of the movement. Myrtle is always described as the heart of the movement, the one who was very practical and taught us how to live the truth that we know. But don't kid yourself, Myrtle was deep too. And she knew her metaphysics. So Myrtle's wisdom is both practical and mystical. So what do you say? Let's dig in. <clears throat> okay, ready? Here's my first lesson from Myrtle. Myrtle taught us how to get the most power out of our affirmations. Now this is important. You may wanna grab a pen because she gives us some really practical things to do. Myrtle said, first of all, don't affirm material stuff because that can really get you into trouble. Focus instead on the principles you want to manifest in your life. I have an example. In fact, I'm going to share it from this incredible book. It's called The Torchbearer to Light the Way. It is a biography of Myrtle Fillmore and it's by Neil Val, V-A-H-L-E who has written incredible books about the founders of our movement, other people who are involved, even the history of unity. So if you want stories, this is a great go-to book. The story I wanna share right now is when Myrtle, in one of her letters, she had gotten, she wrote, was an avid letter writer, and she had gotten letters from people, and one woman in particular was saying that she was affirming a husband. She just wanted to get married, and Myrtle, warned her that it may not be wise to just affirm marriage, but the woman persisted. And as Myrtle shares, it took her just six weeks to manifest her man. But then Myrtle went on to say, it took her six years of hard work, sorrow, and pain to get rid of him. <laughs> so then she goes on to say, you know, affirming marriage may not be the best thing to do. She did give another piece of advice though. She was really specific about our words and our actions with affirmations. And Myrtle's advice was, be sure that they're congruent. Be sure that your actions match the words you're saying. She gave an example. You can affirm that you want health, but you will never get health if you continue to eat unhealthy food or have unhealthy practices. Does that make sense? It is so practical. Your actions must be congruent with your words. So how about you? As you look at your affirmations, are they grounded in truth? And are your actions matching the affirmation you are seeking to manifest? Take a look at affirmations. Such a wise woman. In addition to affirmations, Myrtle taught us something else, and I love this one. Myrtle taught us the importance of having fun in our spirituality. Now, some people are surprised by this because they don't really see Myrtle as fun. They think of her as serious, as the letter writer, the person with all the practical advice. But Myrtle knew how to have fun, and when you read the stories, you will see that. She loved children. She went to all the Sunday school parties and they talk about how she danced at these parties. She also had a very incredible, sharp sense of humor. 
example, she and Charles were conducting together one of the healing sessions. They did a lot of work together and they were doing this big healing session and had a huge congregation. When they were finished, Charles stood up and said, just spontaneously, he said, would you all like to come to our house after this and have a bite to eat? And then he went back to sit down and Myrtle just stood up, walked out to the edge of the stage and said, if you all decide to take him up on this offer, there had better be another demonstration of the loaves and fish. <laughs> this was particularly funny because everybody knew that Myrtle didn't like to cook. In fact, Myrtle didn't cook. Her son, Rick, who designed their home, the Arches, which is still standing at Unity Village now, when he designed the home, he purposely omitted any kitchen because his mother wanted a fairy house with no kitchen that had all that work associated with it. She preferred the work she did with the movement. Now this might lead you to ask, hmm, Charles, Myrtle, three sons, how did they eat? Ah, grandmother Fillmore came to the rescue. Charles's mother lived right next door and did all the cooking. Would that we all could be that lucky. <laughs> But I would ask you again, what about you? Are you finding fun in your spirituality? Are you enjoying the spiritual walk that you're taking? How can we add more fun? So let's look at another lesson from Myrtle. And this one we can all relate to, I believe. Myrtle taught us how to ensure uninterrupted prosperity. Have I got your attention? This is another one for your pencil because she gave us two steps in order to achieve it. And she was very specific. In order to ensure prosperity, she said, first of all, step one, discard the words that have in them any indication of poverty or lack. Get rid of any words that contain any idea of poverty or lack. Step two, Select carefully the words you use to be sure that they affirm plenty and hold that idea of abundance. Myrtle was big on words and she was really specific about this one. She actually said, do not say money is scarce. The very idea, and I'm quoting her now, she said the very statement of such a thought will send money fleeing from your fingers. Can you get the vision? That's enough to keep you being positive and saying words of abundance. She said, don't say times are hard. Instead, say that times are good. Right now, begin to think plenty, act plenty, and give thanks for plenty. Powerful words from a powerful woman. And so I would again ask you to look at yourself. How about you? How are you expressing? your situation related to money right now. Make it a point to get rid of any words that contain any idea of lack and replace them with words that hold the idea of abundance. Would you agree that Myrtle is a pretty wise woman? She shared some wonderful things, but I saved my favorite one for last because I think this is the most powerful. Myrtle taught us the power of prayer. In the unity movement and also in their family, whenever there was any kind of need at all, Myrtle and Charles's first go-to was prayer, unhesitatingly. Now, there are times in the unity movement when they had issues, and I want to share again from the, another book, The Story of Unity by James Dillett Freeman, another excellent resource for great stories that teach you about our wonderful movement that we are a part of. But in this story, they talk about a time, one of many times, when Unity Village was in financial straits. And I love to know that, I love for us to know that because it indicates that just because we stand in truth and live our truth, we still live in this world. And we're going to experience things that may not always align with what our beliefs are. And that's when we have to stand in our truth and take action, not say things aren't working. 
And that's exactly what they did. They stood in their truth. They were very transparent. When there was a time when money was bad, bills had pay, piled up, they weren't sure they were even going to make payroll. Well, what did they do? They called the staff together and they explained the situation. And then they said, we're going to pray together because that was always their first go-to. Well, one of the staffers said, let's pray that the money holds out. Now that kind of makes sense, right? But Myrtle said, no, that, no, 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 no. Let's pray that our faith holds out. Do you hear the difference? Let's pray that our money holds out. That's lack. Let's pray that our faith holds out. That's abundance. That's knowing what we believe and standing in that truth. Wow, what a lesson. I think you could sum up Myrtle Fillmore by saying that her life was a spiritual practice. She lived her truth 24 seven. And we can learn so much from this incredible woman. So on this special Mother's Day, you know, I think this is a Mother's Day different from anything we have ever experienced on a Mother's Day. But it's a powerful time for us to really become aware, to go within and say, how am I living the truth I know? How am I walking my talk? And what can I learn from this incredible woman who was the co-founder of this movement, the mother of unity? What can I learn from this incredible Myrtle Fillmore? The mother side of nature is in us. The mother side of God, nature. It's here, it's in our heart center. And so we need to go to that place and be aware of the truth of who we are and hear this truth. I am speaking directly to you. You are divine. You are worthy. You are God expressing as you, uniquely you. So take that truth, know that truth in your heart, and make Myrtle's legacy your legacy. Be safe, be healthy, be extraordinary as you walk the spiritual path on practical, positive, prosperous feet. Happy Mother's Day. Namaste.